we believe there's even a 1% chance that he is our enemy, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. Well, I, I would like to uh, give the most time to you guys uh, as far as questions and things like that. Now, I don't know, do we have mics set up or not being filled on to literally? No, that's the mic right there. We've got mics and we've got someone that's running out to him. Okay, cool. All you have to do is be you. Okay. <laughs> I just have to be me. Uh, uh, help us all. You, the first hand up, so yes. Should I stand or sit? Oh, is this on? Go ahead. Is it on? Should I stand or sit? Yes. Yes. Uh, so thank you to all the panelists for being here. You've done incredible work. My question is for Chris and Ben. Thank you for being here. Um, so Ben, you were a brilliant Pierre Dalenson, and you're the best Batman. So. That's just my preface. Um, so your version of Bruce Wayne undergoes this radicalization into this pathological uh, jingoism and then de-radicalization to which he then has to navigate the aftermath of what he's done. And then for Chris, your writing in these films is incredibly politically dense and layered. You've got false flag operations, false testimonies as war propaganda, and, you know, I appreciate your advocacy for whistleblowers in the story, you know, given what's happened to other journalists who have told the truth. So, for the both of you, how have these big political topics informed your creative process as storytellers in these films? Woo! So, starting off with an easy one. <laughs> well, there's a thing that Bruce says in the PDS, which is there's even one percent chance that he could destroy the world and we have to treat it with absolute certainty. And that seemed to be something that, that was happening in the wars of our time, right? There was this idea that there's an axis of evil and that there's even going to be a minuscule chance that there's going to be a suitcase in New York City that we have to treat it as a certainty and that we war. So that idea that was going through Bruce's head um, was informed by everything that we were looking at in the, in the world. Um, and so we, we self-consciously wanted to ask that question. And then also politically, when you have the character of being Nigerian, you know, intervention in Africa, that's the thing that, that Superman has has done traditionally, right? Superman intervenes and they're clearly good guys, clear bad guys, and then uh, you know, shooting the dust to save the day. So that was another thing we wanted to kind of complicate and say, well, what actually happens when Superman intervenes? Um, it seems like you know, he's intervening to save Lois, but what other lives are affected? Um, Superman says about the nature of Lois, think of what could happen, and she says, think of what did, you know, pointing at all the stuff that happened in the village. So that was another um, conscious thing. Not to, not to try to make Superman a, a villain, or to say, you know, Superman is wrong, but just to say it's a little more gray and complex than maybe traditionally has been. At least in the films, it's traditionally been presented. In some of the comics, there is a lot of shade of gray in this work. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. That's one of the things that I love about working with Chris and how I've been for since I met him, got to know him, is that he operates as a screenwriter on a lot of different levels simultaneously, where you have a box story that's very key. You know, paints that make sense and have character stories that are connected and compelling and interesting and nuanced. And oftentimes there are thematic corollaries that don't um, impose themselves and stand out in front of the movie so that it's screen or that it's didactic, but rather it's kind of uh, marbleized into the into those two other elements so that if it's something that you're interested in, if it's something that resonates you, uh, with you, it, it works on that level additionally. If it's something um, with which you're like, about which you're not interested or, or where like each sort of goes by, and yet there's a kind of like, um, I always get the sense of Chris that the plot is sort of the, if the screenwriter is the cat burglar breaking into the house, the plot is sort of the meat that's thrown to the guard dogs while the thieves kind of work their way, break their way into the window, so to speak. Thank you.